Today is November the 5th, 2020. I got to show you guys something here. All of you that uh, might have an, an old Collins R390. This is a magnificent receiver and I have brought this thing so alive by putting a, uh, a tunable preamp but made by Amico on the front end of it. I got to show you how this thing sounds. And then I'll, I'll well, I've got a station tuned in on four receivers at one time, and I want you to hear um, on on each receiver uh, separately. Let's see. Uh, to start with, we'll start over here. We'll start with this. So if I want to edit something, I can edit by beat, I can edit by bar, I can edit by second, I can edit by tick, which is the way I do it. A tick is a very, very, very tiny increment. So uh, yeah, it, one tick, you can't even really hear it, but it's a way of really getting everything precise. Uh, and the, uh, of course, the computer talks to me. So I know where I am. Uh, the bar. The, the second, the tick, the, the beat, whatever it is that I want, uh, the, the computer will tell me. Uh, and there's, there's keystrokes for everything. Uh, this, 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 what is the mouse? You use the keyboard for, for everything. You know? Yeah, so like the, the left arrow and right arrow would be maybe two you would use a lot and, and, uh, and maybe the space bar to start. Yeah, there's, there's some things in there. Uh, 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 is that you? Okay, well, that uh, QSO ended a little quicker than I was hoping that it would, but I've got, I'm just trying to show you what the 75S3 sounds like, the uh, R390, and over there the KWM2A and the 51S1. I've always liked this one. It's very, uh, very quiet and crisp. This one's a little noisier, but still does a good job. Uh, this R390 was actually had become quite insensitive, which seems to be a pretty common problem. I think it's cumulative losses throughout the receiver. That was what was uh, described to me by my uh, friend Glenn, who knows a lot about these, a whole lot more than I'll ever know. And I did go through and uh, I've gone through the IF section and the crystal oscillator, but I have a not pulled the RF section out because I don't have the tools to uh, lock the gears and I don't want to mess it up because this one's never been disassembled. It's extremely accurate, extremely stable, but it just became quite insensitive and I could just barely hear one microvolt on it. But with this right here, I get 20 dB gain out of this and I can hear 0.1 microvolts on it. 0.1 which is about the same as I can hear on this one right here. 0.1. Now, look here what 0.1 microvolts is. Hope this uh, comes into focus. See, 0.2 microvolts is an S1. So I can hear down to an S1 with it, with that, um, with that preamp on it. Without it, I can't hear anything below about one microvolt, which is somewhere between S3 and S4. So on the college radios, it's 3 dB per S unit. So between 1 and 4, that says 12 dB. Or between 1 and 3, that says 9 dB. Well, anyway, if I can hear 0.1 and I can hear, uh, if I can hear the difference between 1 and 0.1, that's, that's a ratio of 10, and, it's, and the voltage ratios are 20 times the log of the voltage ratio, so that'd be 20 dB. But anyway, this thing right here brought it to life. Now, this receiver gets a lot of TLC. It's got the very best 6BJ6s and 6AJ5s. 
the mixer tubes are 6C4s. It's got the best tubes that I can possibly come up with and I have tuned it and it is aligned but it, it's just it's just not real sensitive. I can hear these stations but it just does not have the sensitivity of my other receivers until I put this on it. And that's all I had to do. So if you've got an R390 and your sensitivity is a little bit low, try something simple like this. You can build your own, I'm sure. I've got another one down here that I've thought about using, but I'll have to tune it. I've actually put it on there. This is a Hewlett Packard. Uh, let's see. Has a frequency range of 1 kilohertz to 150 megahertz. That's pretty broad, isn't it? 50 ohms in and out. It does work, but it needs to be tuned. I guess I could build a little output tuned circuit for the input and output, at least for the output. But anyway, for something as cheap as this, uh, like I say, it just brings this old fellow, this old girl, have you want to look at it a lot. Uh, as to how they do that. There they are back. Uh, and, the, and the tone of this thing is just so good, at least to my ears. It's got, it's got just enough of the lows in it. Now, let's listen to it again. So uh, to get the 2.5, you got to be doing 5 in. Yeah. So, so uh, oh, I, I know another thing, too, on some of those. Uh, they, there's two AC cords. They split the... <laughs> switch my antenna to the other group over here and listen to them once more. The common size is a 50 amp sub panel and you probably want to have all of that to, with it. Uh, the outlet you would use would be something like uh, you'd see behind an electric dryer, closed dryer. Anyway, what I want you to hear, it's all about this guy right here. I'm so pleased with it. This is what I'm using now. I'm using a, you know, a, a separate a VFO for my transmitter and uh, the receiver here. Of course, I can, uh, you know, connect these, uh, these two here in transceiver mode, which makes it a little easier. So that means whoever I dial in here, I'm already uh, in, on the receiver. I used the, re the VFO in the receiver. <clears throat> which is a common way of using this S-Line equipment so that you don't have to zero beat with them. And of course when I use the uh, transmitter separately, uh, and this is a receiver, I have to zero beat. Uh, but that's okay. So if you've got one and uh, you want to try something like this, then I hope you have as good a luck with a little bit of RF on the front end. And if you notice, it's still very, very quiet. It's a very quiet radio, just like that 51S1 is. The 51S1 is very crisp. And uh, I've shown these a lot of times, but I just think that this, uh, this amplifier is just so beautiful. Uh, that's why I changed it back to the pair of four 400s instead of the uh, whatever I had it. I've had uh, 46 1000, 3 1000Zs. So there you go. Stay safe and uh, thanks for watching. And by the way, I should have shown this before uh, uh, quitting. This is the uh, signal generator that I use. When I say I can measure one microvolt and point one microvolt, so this is uh, I'm using this HP uh, 8656B, 
and I think it works quite well. And the way you can punch it in there is a frequency you can put in amplitude, you can put in point one microvolt. You can put it in that way, or you can put it in as uh, uh, <clears throat> amplitude of minus one, uh, one minus, no, I can't do minus 200. <laughs> amplitude um, minus 120 dBm. You can set it any way you want. But this is the instrument I uh, use to, to make those claims of uh, 1 microvolt and 0.1 microvolt. I thought you needed to see that. So you wouldn't think I was just pulling it out of the sky.